Hi everyone, welcome uh, to this uh, online multiplier event. Uh, this is the first time we're doing this as well, so uh, bear with us uh, a bit. Uh, we, I would like to welcome you on board, first of all, uh, and uh, talk to you about upskills. Uh, uh, my name is Stavros Sinokopoulos. I, I'd like to say hello from Malta, too, uh, seeing that all these countries are around here. Uh, and uh, um, I'm actually the, the, the project leader uh, for upskills. Um, before I give you some uh, uh, information about the project itself, uh, I think it's important to do a bit of housekeeping and give you some information uh, about today's event. Uh, yeah. I would like to request that everyone keeps their microphones off at times. We're expecting a high volume of participants. We're already at 156 and we have over 600 registrations. Uh, so um, it's important that um, you know, we try and, uh, and, and keep muted uh, so that the event goes as planned. Uh, the meeting is being recorded as we've already been notified uh, in the email uh, you received uh, with information on how to um, join. Uh, and of course, if you wish to stay anonymous, feel free to keep your camera off. Uh, however, uh, even if you keep your camera off, it is important that your full name and surname is displayed um, under uh, your, uh, well, black screen, I would imagine. Uh, uh, and that's because the organizers, we need to get this information uh, to keep track of attendance. Uh, and uh, if, uh, even if your, your name and surname will be displayed, uh, in, in case we share any screenshots or anything uh, from here, uh, we won't be included any screenshots with, uh, um, with names on them. Uh, because there is going to be such a, you know, there's expected to be uh, such high attendance, uh, it's preferable, we've decided to ask everyone to refrain from raising hands and just ask questions by writing them in the chat. Uh, and these will be answered during dedicated Q&A sessions uh, across the day. Um, and uh, finally, if you require any technical assistance, uh, you can ask uh, David Borden from Clarin Eric uh, for help uh, by chatting with him directly. Uh, we've also enabled uh, the chat feature so that you can also speak among yourselves and take this opportunity to, to network a little bit as well. I hope that um, all this is clear. And without further ado, uh, I'd like to, you know, uh, give you a bit more information about the Upskills program. Uh, the Upskills project is basically uh, an Erasmus Plus strategic partnership. Um, it's, it's a partnership for higher education and it's, a, it's basically a consortium of eight partners uh, where the University of Malta uh, is the coordinator um, uh, and lead applicant, uh, who was the lead applicant for the project. Uh, the other teams involved in the project are the University of Belgrade, the University of Bologna, Clarin Eric, um, uh, University of Graz and the University of Rijeka. Uh, however, apart from the core Erasmus Plus team, we also have uh, uh, two equal partners who have received funding from Movetia from Switzerland. These are the University of Geneva and the University of Zurich. And we're all working uh, towards this project. Uh, the aim of the project is to tackle uh, skills, uh, gaps and mismatches in students of language related disciplines uh, in order to create a better workforce. And the rationale for this is that basically graduates of linguistics and language related degrees are often are very often needed uh, in industry jobs and in research jobs too uh, however it's often noted that they lack uh, that they may lack uh, critical thinking and problem solving skills and we're talking about not knowledge within the field uh, of their studies but basically more practical knowledge knowledge of research design and data analysis in relation to particular tasks in the industry uh, they also sometimes lack project management skills and digital skills, especially if they're from a humanities background. In order to tackle this issue, uh, we are trying to implement, we are developing currently a modular and blended, uh, sorry, we're developing a, a, a curriculum and, uh, and some other things that I'm going to talk to you about in just a minute. Uh, and we will be implementing the modular and blended learning um, we will be trying to, to make use of innovative pedagogy such as online educational games, and uh, we will be focusing also 
uh, on real world applications. So the learning will be more active than usually, uh, and it will be based on tasks uh, rather than on simple lectures. Uh, and then uh, we also intend to integrate research and research infrastructures into the teaching so that students have a bit uh, um, have a better idea of what to expect when they get out there uh, in the uh, workplace. Now, how we're going to uh, manage all this, uh, our project is basically uh, framed around four uh, main intellectual outputs. The first one is the needs analysis, and this is what we will be focusing on today. Uh, the second one uh, has to do with uh, how to best use uh, research uh, into teaching. Uh, so um, uh, this is something that we're currently working on. At the same time, uh, we are working towards creating learning content uh, that will um, focus on the soft and transversal skills uh, uh, as well as the knowledge uh, that is required for positions in, in linguists in languages more generally. Uh, and then the fourth intellectual output has to do with educational games for active learning. Uh, so how we can use and gamify the experience to make to make it um, uh, um, more fun uh, and you know for for the learners. Uh, then for each intellectual output, we have a dedicated multiplier event. Uh, you're actually attending the first one, uh, which is being hosted. And I'd like to thank uh, Bologna for their uh, the University of Bologna. Uh, for their excellent work in this. Uh, we will uh, have uh, three more, um, um, uh, sorry, multiplier events, uh, one in Utrecht, one in Graz, and another one in Malta. And this whole effort will culminate in a summer school in Serbia that will take place in July 2023. So those of you who have already given us uh, your email and, and uh, have uh, requested more information and to keep in touch, we will be notifying you of further multiplier events that will be taking place. Uh, hopefully in person next time and somewhere close to you. Uh, then, uh, what do we expect to achieve with all this? And this is the important thing for us. Uh, basically, what we want is to create uh, a curriculum that will be able to, pro to prepare uh, students a bit better for the reality of the job market, uh, i.e. what to expect when they're getting a job. Uh, we also want to sensitize academics with respect to what skills employers are, are, are looking for, uh, other, you know, apart from theory-based learning and research-based learning uh, that is based on academic research, there is also the, um, the aspect of what students are expected to get uh, to be able to do when they uh, enter uh, the workforce. Uh, we also want to raise awareness among employers about the skills and aptitude of graduates of linguistics and language-related degrees, uh, because we have uh, noted that uh, usually, you know, uh, People are not really aware of what a linguist, uh, um, you know, can do, uh, or whether they would be um, good enough for a particular position. And usually, use generic uh, terms to ask for stuff. Uh, we will, of course, create engaging modular uh, learning content that will be freely available to everyone. Uh, so this should be coming together in about fifteen months from now, and it will be freely available to all. Uh, and we also want to promote on the uh, pedagogical side um, active task and research-based learning uh, rather than uh, simple lecturing uh, in this regard. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's uh, kickstart the meeting for today. The plan for today is to first dedicate one hour to presenting the results of our needs analysis. Uh, then we will have a number of sessions uh, where we will engage in discussion and people from, uh, well, distinguished people actually, thank you very much for attending, uh, will, uh, from the from the institutions, uh, the industry and academia, will be talking to us um, about um, job prospects and aptitude and knowledge uh, related to, to the workforce for students. Uh, then, uh, and I've, uh, um, I've marked this separately because I think that it's really important uh, this is a really important part of the process. We will be getting some experience sharing by graduates of Erasmus Mundus Master's programs, and uh, the whole event will culminate in an interactive after session where we would have hoped to to have to have a chance to you know to, to, to create a truly interactive experience. But given the number of participants, uh, it will be slightly toned down. That said, you will be um, joining in different breakout rooms, and we will be discussing. Um, 
um, matters around employability of linguistics and language students, uh, and then reporting back uh, for the final uh, session, for the wrap-up session. So uh, I would like to thank you very much for joining. Uh, and I would also like to, you know, to, 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 uh, to bring it to your attention that we have a Facebook page and we also have a Twitter account and we're using these hashtags to publicize this event. So feel free to just use them. Uh, if you go to our website where you, you have the uh, link uh, from uh, the registration page, uh, you will also find the link to all these pages. Uh, so share the word, spread the word, uh, and thank you very much for joining. Uh, the first session will be chaired by uh, Professor Bernardini uh, from the University of Bologna, and I will just give the floor to her for now. Goodbye from me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stavros. And uh, we have very, like like Stavros has mentioned, we have very a very tight um, uh, schedule today. We wanted to pack as much as possible and make uh, make this fruitful for all of you. And, and therefore, um, what we'll do just now is we'll move on to our needs analysis. Our needs analysis is composed of several parts, but it culminates with, um, with a proposal for a profile or a series of profiles, let's say, uh, that we think are, are really needed for the um, to, to understand what uh, linguists and, and language experts currently are asked to do uh, by the industry. But this, as, as I was saying, has several parts. And therefore, we'll start with the with the first with the first component of our needs analysis. So I'd ask our first speaker, Jelena Gledic, to uh, share her screen and I leave the floor to her. Thank you, Elena. Jelena. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Sylvia. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Um, it is a great pleasure really to share the, the first results of our project with everyone today. I'm Jelena from the University of Belgrade, so greetings from Serbia. Uh, and I will talk today a bit about the first thing that we did as part of this project. Uh, as Stavis explained, our aim is to create some learning materials to tackle some gaps uh, in skills. But of course, first, before we started, we needed to expand what was done as part of the project proposal. We did some preliminary research, but as a first step in our project, we needed to see what is available already out there so that we would know what we need to create or also find examples that we can use and include in our programs and promote to other universities so we make sure that there is a unified offering of these materials needed to have these modern well-equipped linguists that uh, will be profiled later today. Uh, so our, uh, our aim was to look at BA and MA degrees in language and linguistics in line with our project proposal. We wanted to look at uh, highly ranked uh, universities uh, in these areas. And then we selected and made a list of, we tried to cover as many as possible European degrees. Uh, and then we made a representative sample of those degrees. And in those, we uh, examined the curricula and looked at how much research skills, data acquisition skills, data handling skills, plus our two cross-cutting components, linguistics theory and research management, which are the skills that we identified in our project proposal as lacking. And we looked in these um, uh, degrees, whether the curricula uh, covers these areas and uh, to what extent. Now, our sample uh, in the end was 122 degrees, which were a representative sample of the list that we created from um, the uh, QS uh, rankings. And then also during this process, we identified 12 degrees that should be additionally studied because they didn't necessarily uh, fall into the representative sample, but our experts from within the project team estimated that their curriculum might provide some good examples uh, for us to follow in our project. Uh, the representation of the uh, topics that Upskills plans to contribute to was less than one quarter in the sample of degrees that we looked at, which showed that indeed these uh, skills and knowledges are lacking in current university curricula. Uh, pro programming, machine learning, and linguistic theory are mostly present at MA degrees, not that much at BA levels. And the degrees that were identified by our experts within the team as exemplary were characterized by flexible curricula, modular curricula, and very diverse pedagogical approaches. So those seem to be the things uh, that uh, made these curricula and these degrees uh, very good in the eyes of, of uh, experts. 
Uh, here is a nice word bubble that can show you some of the most frequent words uh, that were found in the degree names. So this is not the curriculum, this is just the degree names. Unsurprisingly, there's of course linguistics and language, but then there are also some other um, uh, keywords that are very much in line with today's um, labor market, for example, business, and then of course we have computational, etc. cetera. Um, one other important thing that we looked at is how much these degrees actually discuss future career prospects of students. Uh, and not many degrees actually did explicitly uh, state in their descriptions of curricula what students will be potentially able to do once they graduate from these programs. Uh, but we did identify one very good example that showed something along the lines of what Upskills is also trying to do, which is uh, from for BA graduates from the Royal Holloway University of London. And here, as we quote here, as a modern linguist, you'll have excellent communication, analytical and research skills combined with the proven ability to communicate communicate fluently alongside practical skills such as translation and interpretation. You will have developed the kind of sensitivity to different cultures that is highly prized in the workplace. And this example really shows very well uh, something that we also hope to contribute to with upskills uh, to create some of the materials uh, that uh, will help create these kinds of linguists, of course, on the shoulders of all the other teachers and educators who have been doing that. And that is precisely what our Syria curricula serve for. Uh, so thank you very much. I will stop my screen sharing and give the floor back to Sylvia. Thank you, Yelena, and the timing was perfect. So now it's my turn to um, share my screen. And, and before I, so I'll take just half a minute from my presentation uh, to explain the title, which is something I forgot to, to do when I first started this session. We decided on, on the quote, every time I hire a linguist to start this, uh, to start the day and, and to get you thinking about the, uh, to get you thinking about the topic, because um, some of you may be familiar with this. This might be, uh, certainly people at my age uh, who studied languages and were interested in technology in the 1990s were very familiar with the quote. The real quote was, every time I fire a linguist, the uh, performance of our system goes up. In fact, this is a quote from uh, Fred Jelinek, who has then, if you're interested, you'll find a paper on the web where he's, the paper is titled, um, Many of my, uh, Some of My Best Friends Are Linguists, where he says, in fact, I never fired a linguist, but he did say, he did use this quote. And I think it's, uh, it's an interesting starting point for our discussion, whether linguists are needed or not in the, in the language industry. So let me go on with the, um, with, with this part of our needs analysis, which was our, the second installment, let's say, um, we wanted to look at the um, at, at three main sources of evidence, namely language industry surveys. You have a, a list here. It's an incomplete list because there are many language industry surveys available, some of them very recent, so we couldn't uh, take them into account, but also institutional papers that have to do with language, with, with education in general and with language education in the 21st century, looking at how the, the world is changing and society is changing because there's not just jobs, right? We don't only study for jobs, we only study to make our lives better and society better. And finally, academic works, both of a general kind to do with educational perspectives and also with, uh, with the general um, outlook for language degrees. Of course, this was not, I, I'm not going to pretend to, that we approached this topic as a blank slate because we had our own ideas about what was needed, but we looked in the literature for, uh, for evidence of what were the main themes that these different sources were, were uh, discussing and, and approaching. So I'm going to try not to overlap with the other speakers, and I'm going to focus on the main themes, the main topics for, for these three sources. So first of all, the language industry surveys. What are the uh, key theme, themes for, for the, that, that come out of the language industry surveys? And I think this uh, quote from Taos is quite revealing. The, the expectation is that 
that prices for basic translation services will give, go down so that, that there will be less and less properly, let's say, paid uh, translation. But at the same time, other services that are around translation will become more remunerative. And, and why? Well, because there's a lower availability of adequately skilled resources. So there's a connection between the need to improve qualifications and also uh, many jobs that are out there, many tasks that are out there. And here's, uh, here's some of the, um, the, the most often uh, quoted mentioned and tasks and um and features of the language industry. Um, so the, the, the fact that the language industry is becoming datafied is, is clear to all. So there will be a need, there is a need for data management skills. And then of course, machine translation is a big theme and I expect it to be uh, discussed today as well. Um, digital marketing and content creation, however, is probably less of a technical issue and more of a creative one where, however, the need for technical skills has to be um, has to be joined, has to be complemented with also an ability to use creativity and and knowledge of of uh, the target culture that that the various language experts work with. Uh, project management and client relations are also related, not technical really, but they have to do with handling services uh, around translation and other language related services. And finally, quality control processes. Um, and, and there's an aspect that is particularly important, I believe, which is the gender dimension. All the, the um, reports that mention the gender dimension point out that there are very many women working in the language industry. However, there's still a very, very large revenue gap. And most of the jobs in the language, um, language companies, so the more stable jobs, tend to be still um, the, the province of men rather than women. So there's a gender dimension that I would like not to forget. Uh, moving on quickly, because I'm late, the institutional key themes. Um, the uh, OECD has pointed out, as we are all expecting, that routine tasks are likely to be taken over by intelligent machines, which means that we have to be more intelligent than machines. And the, the skills that are mentioned as all important uh, by both the OECD and, and UNESCO are are all related to the ability to critically process information and work together, collaborate uh, in, a, in a digital world with um, a, a keen attention to critical thinking and problem solving. Uh, specifically for language education, there are several issues that have been pointed out, mainly to do with the fact that the language degrees are not seen nowadays as something that students or society would like to go on to. And this is probably mainly for uh, because, um, because we should or they should target also alternative career path. And then there are other issues that have to do with translation uh, and interpreting that we might mention uh, during the day. Finally, the academic uh, key themes. Um, um, together with a group of other scholars from several institutes around Europe, we, we proposed certain tasks that we believe are still not very common but that should become more common. And I will only point out the last of these, namely approving and vouchsafing the correctness of auto automatic translations, which is different from post-editing. Right? It, it's it's uh, a kind of, of stamp that we put on machine translation saying that, yes, this is the real translation of the text uh, that has been submitted to a machine translation uh, engine. Um, and finally, an aspect that we'll get back to repeatedly today is the need to embed technology teaching in professional uh, workflows and research projects. Research-based curricula are very important, and this connects all the themes, the expectations of the industry, the expectations of institutions and society, and what we as academics can do to prepare students for, for this world, namely, namely uh, looking more into um, approaches that favor a research uh, attitude in the students. Because in this way, we'll also be able to promote and advance those skills that have a high employability potential, not just a value for research professions. Thank you very much. 
Okay, so the next step in the in the needs analysis was a corpus based analysis of job advertisements. Now, this was the, the output um, of the first of three successive steps in which we wanted to understand what companies um, expect of language um, and linguistics graduates. Now, um, we started from the analysis of job ads, which were posted online in various channels. Um, and this, uh, this is the part I'm going to focus on, but the results of this analysis fed into a questionnaire that we submitted to a selected group of companies, which then fed into, um, the, um, into a focus group with company, represent, with company representatives. So an even more selected uh, set of companies. Now, what were our questions? Um, for the corpus-based analysis? Well, the first one was what skills and competencies are mentioned as requirements in job posts and what are the typical tasks associated with the advertised positions? Now, uh, I'm not going to answer these questions because the, the, the final answers will come in the last presentation of this session um, in which we present the profile. So what I want to do really in this um, presentation is to focus on the method and the kind of data we used as a starting point and then allowed us to get to the, to the profile. So um, how did we select job ads? Well, they came from three sources. So websites uh, of technological companies. So the job offer section of highly technological companies, big names, but also uh, smaller companies. Um, the job offer section of specialized linguist websites like the linguist list and career linguist but also general purpose employment platforms where we did some targeted searches to look for a specific type of job. Now, what, what were these criteria, the criteria that we adopted? Well, all the job ads had to involve some language or linguistic related task, which required some digital and or technological or research skills. This meant that jobs involving exclusively content creation tasks like writing or editorial jobs or just translation and revision tasks were excluded, not because they are less interesting, but because we're all more familiar with them. We know what to expect from them. We also excluded job ads where a degree in a STEM field was a requirement. And this is because obviously we want to focus on jobs that are open to uh, graduates in language and linguistics um, related degrees. Now, this, um, this search uh, allowed us to collect a corpus of nearly 200 job ads from 112 companies. Um, notice that the corpus is available at the, at the link that you see uh, at the bottom of the screen. So if you want to play around with it, it's there. The corpus name is uh, Ad Skills. Now, just one result that I think is particularly interesting and relates to, uh, to something that Sylvia was mentioning before. When we look at the requirement for uh, at the um, requirement section of job ads and specifically at the type of um, degree titles that are required, we see that in a minority, so less than 50% of the text that we collected, uh, a bachelor's degree or a master's degree are required. Well, the, the percentage for PhD or the requirement of a PhD is like 10%. And even if we combine um, text where either a bachelor or a master or both, we're still around 60%. And notice that these are not necessarily required titles, but they might be preferred titles. And this again relates to something that Sylvia was saying before, the fact, maybe the fact that language and linguistics degrees have a branding problem. They, are, they have not been able to communicate the kind of edge that graduates have when they get into the market. So making companies require these degrees because they think it's, it's valuable. That's, that's um, our hypothesis for these results. And now I basically run out of time. So I'll just leave this slide here where you see the kind of uh, skills and competencies and tasks that emerged as particularly frequent in the analysis. We categorized them, and here you see um, some of the most frequent phrases associated with these different um, skills and tasks. And I think I'll thank you and leave the floor to the next speaker. Uh, so as Adriano already mentioned, uh, the analysis of job ads fed into a survey of businesses, business sectors, hiring lingu linguists and language professionals. This has also been built into the profile. So I will briefly present 
uh, what went into the uh, survey. So our target group were employers from digital and data intensive sectors. They didn't necessarily need to identify language and linguistic graduates as a target talent pool, uh, but we did want to uh, see what kind of uh, jobs they do and what the assessment of the employers is of the skills and knowledges that they already have. Uh, in the end, our questionnaire, which was um, designed in English and then later on also translated into Serbian and Croatian, it was filled in by 70 businesses uh, and their areas of work ranged from language service product providers to marketing and finance. And you can see a distribution of the sizes. So there was a fair distribution of all different kinds of sizes of companies that provided uh, information uh, to us. And uh, the results indicate that about 80% of the surveyed businesses already have positions uh, that require language and linguistic skills and knowledges, and about 60% plan to open up or add more jobs uh, that require these kinds of skills. The main tasks that uh, language and linguistics uh, graduates uh, do in these companies are working with data, technological tools, and software and of course communication but also conducting research and managing uh, projects and you can see here a summary of the different kinds of positions that linguists and language professionals have in the surveyed companies. Uh, the most important skills are in line with what we plan to cover in the upskills project uh, and they're also uh, the skills that the employers identified as most in need of improvement and you see here a quote that uh, indicates the kind of struggles that the upskill project hopes to tackle and help employees but also then their employers uh, and uh, a bit grainy sorry for that but uh, here uh, you can see uh, a nice comparison of levels of importance and the need of improvement of different kinds of skills, uh, where you can see that some of these skills that uh, language graduates we all claim they have good skills and that's for example communication skills they are very important but they don't need that much need for improvement for example also presentation skills um, and uh, some uh, skills that have been already advanced a lot by by uh, different kinds of projects in previous years so these are important and maybe not as much in need of improvement uh, when it comes to uh, knowledge and experience uh, here we also have what is traditionally uh, believed that uh, language knowledge and linguistics knowledge are not uh, lacking. Uh, there are some indicators that what might be lacking is the ability to practically apply these skills, and that's where problem solving comes in. Uh, project management, as will be probably discussed later today as well, uh, came up as something that is very lacking uh, and really needs uh, improvement a lot. Um, so those are some interesting results that should be pointed out here. Uh, and what uh, I'd also like to briefly present is just uh, a sort of summary of the kind of knowledge and skills that um, companies look for. Uh, so at uh, the first and most important place, it's of course the knowledge is that language and linguistics degrees usually offer, which is of course a very good and strong base in uh, the knowledge of English or whichever other language is being taught. Uh, translation and localization, of course, as skills that have been fortified uh, in the past years quite a lot, and computational linguistics, which has been in the rise as well, uh, and which has been assessed as uh, not as much in need of improvement, but there are some specific areas that um, should be improved. Uh, one thing um, that uh, should be emphasized there is data analysis and language technology tools, including um, uh, computer assisted translation tools, uh, computer science needed as an additional skill, including programming, terminology management, uh, project management in linguistics, and then again, project management once again, because this is something that um, at our meeting yesterday, summarizing these results, we really identified as what uh, a lot of employers at all levels of analysis indicated is very much lacking. So we're happy we'll be able to contribute with that in our project. And I'd like to give the floor to the next speaker. Hi, good morning. So I am Michaela from the University of Malta, and I will be very briefly running you through the interviews we conducted with job market stakeholders. So our needs analysis um, is divided into what's here and I just explained. So the surveys we conducted and was followed by focus group interviews with job market stakeholders. So the aim of these interviews was to follow up on the surveys administered to gain a better understanding of the, needs and of the needs of the industry when it comes to hiring graduates in linguistics and language-related degrees. 
what we did was um, we had two advisory board meetings in April with associate partners, which served as an informal pilot since through open-ended discussions, we identified which aspects of the survey we should focus on during the interviews and prepared an interview guide. Now we had a total of 12 job market stakeholders coming from 11 different companies. All the, all the companies incorporate language business in their uh, company and they belong to different domains. These domains are language service providers, the automotive industry, language technology and insurance services. All our interviewees occupy a managerial or administrative position and their areas of engagement can be grouped into these four main categories. So translation, localization, computation and linguistics and speech recognition. Due to their different backgrounds, the participants constitute a group representative enough of the various industries, hiring linguists and language experts. All the interviews lasted around 30 to 40 minutes. They were conducted by consortium members and were of a semi-structured format to ensure comparability of responses. A presentation with graphs and lists showcasing the findings of the surveys were used uh, in each interview and the participants were asked to comment on the results presented. So what we did was perform a conventional content analysis during which we identified common patterns and themes from the obtained data. Now I will briefly outline these three main themes. So graduate employability, our interviewees believe that there is still a healthy demand in the industry for graduates with linguistics and language related degrees. The participants agreed that specialized expertise should be complemented with technical know-how and commented that graduates with a mixed background of linguistics and technical skills are generally preferred. Also, nowadays, many companies hire language specialists to take on hybrid roles, such as combining being a translator and a project manager. In addition, the participants are actively seeking for employees with specialized knowledge rather than simply native speakers, so as to deal with the ambiguous and unstructured data presented to them. Lastly, although the need for linguistic expertise is on the rise, recruitment is not always on a full-time basis. So there are smaller companies who rely on external experts, and then there are large companies who often outsource linguists, but also have uh, full-time in-house positions, mainly for computational linguists. I will not go into the most sought out skills since Maya after me will talk about this, However, as already discussed, computation knowledge and skills were deemed imperative as well as project management skills. Moving on to higher education, formation and workplace reality. So more than half our interviewees are of the opinion that curricula should be more goal oriented, focusing on technical training and transferable skills, which will be reflected in the job performance. The industry places a lot of emphasis on potential employees versatility since uh, they can contribute to more than one task in the company's workflow. This includes being a quick learner and um, being able to do more than one task. The need to provide quantitative data analysis training was also stressed together with dedicated courses on data handling and project management. All in all, language and linguistics curricula should provide more specialized training that will enable graduates to think outside the box and to come up with their own creative and innovative solutions. In conclusion, our original predictions for a steady, if not increasing need for graduates of linguistics and language related disciplines in the industry is corroborated in the surveys and interviews. It is required for graduates to have a strong technical background to be receptive and quick learners. And lastly, our interviewees are of the opinion that a more hands-on approach is necessary. This interweaves well with our plans for the creation of learning content, 
which focuses on problem um, and research-based teaching rather than traditional teaching. Thank you very much, Michaela. And so we're approaching the final part after this rather long introduction. Uh, so Maya Milicevic will be the last speaker. Yes, good, good morning, everyone. I hope you are seeing the, the, the screen and I apologize in advance in case you hear some background, background noise, it's outside. So I'm afraid I can't do much about it. So I hope it won't, it won't be too, too, too disturbing. So what I'll be presenting to you uh, is uh, the final outcome of the upskills needs analysis. So our final objective was to create a sort of organized sum of the findings that you have just heard about from the five uh, individual components of the needs analysis. And this organized sum gained the form of a new professional profile that, uh, that we named language data and project, uh, project specialist. Um, so the first thing to highlight is that this language data and project specialist is not uh, the name of a specific job position. So it's not about uh, identifying a new specific job position in the market. It is more of a general target uh, that we would like to propose uh, for uh, language and linguistics related degree programs. Uh, we formulated, we described this profile, this general profile, in terms of, uh, on the one hand, knowledge, skills, and competences, and on the other, typical tasks and responsibilities. So I will, uh, I will start from the knowledge, skills, and competences. And uh, you have basically seen all of these in the previous presentations, so we are going to sum them, sum them up here. Uh, we uh, identified that these uh, the, the knowledge, skills, and competences typically required in the contemporary uh, language-related job market can be grouped in seven clusters. One is disciplinary knowledge, skills, and competences, then intercultural, transversal, technical, data-oriented, research-oriented, and organizational. Uh, and we believe that it should be a target for all language and linguistics degree programs to provide their students with at least some basic skills in all of these seven clusters. Now it is not our our profile is intended to be modular so it is not uh, it does not have to be used in the same way by everyone and not everyone needs to acquire the exact same skills but something from this clusters from each of these clusters seems to be useful uh, and it seems to be what the market is uh, is uh, requiring. Now let me show you just some examples of more specific items that fall under these, uh, these clusters. Uh, you can find the complete list in our report uh, on this intellectual output. And I believe there is already the link uh, in, the, in the chat, the one that contains the word deliverables. So you can find the complete table there. So these are just some examples. So of course, for disciplinary, um, for disciplinary knowledge, uh, we, uh, we assume knowledge of specific languages, ability to conduct linguistic analysis, translation, interpreting, and so on. And it, it's clear already here that it's not that in every degree program, it, it should be necessary to acquire all of these skills to a very, uh, and all of these knowledge types to a very high level. So some programs can be more specialized in one thing, some in, in another. But each program will and probably already is very strong in one of the components. So that's where the modularity lies. Um, the intercultural knowledge, skills, and competencies comprise awareness of cultural differences, cultural agility, and so on. Then transversal skills, of course, are very important. They comprise creativity, the very much mentioned problem solving skills, also presentation and writing skills. Uh, technical skills are probably the most varied ones because they go from the basic knowledge of how to use computers, how to work with different file formats, 
to understanding language technologies, so tools for automatic language processing, uh, to understanding of basic, under at least basic understanding of computational linguistics, and ideally a knowledge of a programming language. Then in the data-oriented skills uh, we have, uh, that have also been emphasized uh, a lot, we have the ability to collect, manage, curate, analyze language data, also the ability to do a bit of number crunching, so knowledge of statistics, familiarity with data formats, data standards in terms of not just formats, but also legal requirements and, and so on. Then we have research-oriented skills, knowledge of research design, analytical thinking, hypothetical thinking, uh, uh, critical processing of information and and so on so the ability to know uh, come up with interesting problems and come up with solutions and finally we have the organizational skills project management also very very often uh, very often mentioned uh, by by participants in our needs analysis quality control planning teamwork and uh, and and so on so uh, again we believe that this very general profile could be seen as a target for pretty much any course, uh, degree course in language and linguistics related subjects. But then of course, each program could focus on specific items from, from, our, uh, from our list. Now as concerns, the typical tasks and responsibilities, uh, they are actually quite varied as you could see in the previous presentations as, as well. So they range from data collection, transcription of audio files, uh, add, uh, data annotation, so adding information to texts, um, language data research, so asking questions, not just analyzing data, uh, then translation, interpreting, testing of technological tools. So even though maybe typically uh, linguists are not equipped to uh, develop tools, although they can be that as well, they can at the, at the very least work on testing technological tools, machine learning models, and so on. But then there, is, there are also uh, tasks that seem to be more related to well coordination, so communication with teams, clients, project management, process evaluation, and, and so on. So if, actually, if we look at these, uh, at these tasks, we can see that they kind of cluster together in domains that quite closely correspond to what to the clusters that we identified within the skills the knowledge skills and competencies part and some tasks are more data oriented so they will require more more data oriented skills some are more research oriented some are more organizational some are more technical uh, you might be wondering where the disciplinary knowledge for example disappeared in this slide well it really didn't because if you have a closer look at these tasks, they all require a very high level of disciplinary uh, knowledge, uh, uh, knowledge and, and skills, uh, intercultural uh, skills, and transversal skills. So those three are always needed for all the tasks. But then there are other tasks that are more focused on a specific type of, of skills. And just a clarification, translation and interpreting are under technical skills because they often require use of uh, specific specific tools. They are, of course, also disciplinary, very disciplinary, disciplinary tasks. So the fact that we uh, that in this general language data and project specialist profile that we could quite clearly spot these clusters of both skills and tasks uh, led us to not stop at formulating this profile, but at also suggesting four sub-profiles that are slightly more specific. So I'm briefly going to introduce these four sub-profiles as, as well. Uh, we named the first sub-profile language data analyst. And the typical tasks that a language data analyst does are related to data collection, data annotation, and data analysis as well. Of course, the name, the name says as well. Now, what are the skills that a language data analyst uh, needs, to, needs to have? Well, you will be happy to hear that they are all the skills that, that we listed before. But uh, we believe that uh, 
we can identify some skills as more important for this sub profile and some skills as less important and you can already kind of get the idea from the shades of, of, of gray and I also try to express the importance but through the thickness of the boxes so uh, you can see that what defines this profile is a very high level of data oriented skills. So ability, of course, to collect, analyze data, knowledge of statistics, uh, data standards, and, and so on. But at the same time, the, this, for this sub-profile, it is also necessary to have a very high level of disciplinary, intercultural, transversal, and technical knowledge, skills, and competencies. Uh, what is slightly less important, but should be present at least at a basic level, are research-oriented and organizational skills. Research-oriented skills being, according to us, a bit more important for this profile than organizational skills. So a bit of everything is needed, but some aspects are more important than, uh, than others. In the second profile, which we labeled language data scientist, things change a bit because what becomes central are research-oriented uh, knowledge, skills, and, and, and competences. So while a language data analyst uh, works with data, a language data scientist also decides on what kind of data will be studied and why. So a language data scientist works with a bigger picture, we could, we could say. While language data analyst does mostly operational day-to-day -day tasks, language data scientist also provides this bigger context in which data are chosen uh, and you know, decides on the way they will be analyzed and, and, and so on. So let's say that the tasks include language data and processes research. And data-oriented skills, of course, also remain very important uh, and possibly a slightly higher level of organizational skills, but then organizational skills are not so important for this, for this sub-profile. But you can see that, that both language data analysts and language data scientists have this data plus research component combined. It might be the case that the language data analyst is an entry level position, and then you know, further on in the career, one becomes a language data, language data scientist. The, sec the other two sub-profiles that we identified are slightly different in that they are more related to organizational skills and less to research-oriented skills. So our sub-profile number three is language data manager, uh, who is kind of similar to language data analyst uh, because, because this profile requires data, primarily data-oriented data -oriented skills and competencies, but it also requires more organizational uh, skills because this is where language data cleaning and curation and management happen. So for example, you know, uh, taking care of uh, terminology databases would be uh, a task that would, a specific task that will fall under, under the tasks uh, of, language, of a language data manager. And finally, uh, we identified the sub-profile of a language project manager who works on language project and workflow coordination. So this would be someone who has to have very, very strong organizational skills. So we go back to project management again, which turned out to be more important than we, than we had anticipated. Uh, obviously, this position also requires um, a deep knowledge of data, of data oriented elements, but it is more about coordinating more complex processes in a company, so to speak. Uh, we also expect these sub -pro -pro this, this profile and these sub profiles to be at least uh, to some extent applicable to not just to industry positions, but also to positions in public institutions and also in in uh, in academia because the position of language uh, because the profile of language data scientist is something that corresponds quite closely to what is required for example for doing phd phd research and for becoming a researcher more in academia more in general so i will stop here and we will now have some time for questions so let me just thank you before before i finish
Thank you. Thank you very much, Maya. And I'd like to thank all the, the speakers uh, and, and friends from Upskills who contributed to this needs analysis. So how much time do we have? We have about 10 minutes. OK, so we have about 10 minutes. What I would like to do in these 10 minutes is, is take some questions. Like, uh, And, and uh, please note that there will also be a longer session in the afternoon for quest for say more extended uh, questions or comments or issues that you want to raise because we believe that uh, as translators for sure but as linguists I think as well that we tend to be quite isolated and not have so many chances to share our views about uh, about trends uh, or, or expectations so I think this is a good chance for us to get together and, and and also it's a chance for you to contribute to a project so that we can amplify the voice of the uh, of lang of language experts and linguists and translators and interpreters and so on so um, getting to the to the questions in the chat I think there's one point uh, that we haven't I'm not going to take them in in any order okay so if, if anyone wants to also add uh, but but one point that uh that i noticed that's interesting is the issue about the language differences this idea that we tend to or that some people in this industry tend to think that english is enough right that and, and this is also, of, of course, we found in the job ads uh, many times that English is a requirement, but that that is not enough, right? That that languages are different, and therefore having a knowledge of um, languages that may work very differently from uh, the, the say the European languages that many of us work with uh, is no is precious knowledge, and it's is also knowledge that cannot be whose acquisition cannot be shortened, let's say. Okay, so I think it, uh, I don't know if anyone from the uh, team wants to answer the question about the, what languages are needed, say, or, or, you know, whether specific languages or whether more than one language is needed uh, to work in the industry today. Uh, I can maybe say, because uh, I sure, actually had this impression when I was conducting interviews with uh, people from companies, I was uh, quite surprised by how much they underlined, you know, the multilinguality that is actually needed. So I would just really encourage people might have this impression that, okay, only big languages are needed or only big languages are of interest to industry. Actually, the opposite is true. So that's what I also wrote in the chat. And then there's Sure. If I may add to this, I mean, because we did the analysis of focus group interviews, I mean, what transpired is that apart from, I mean, Tanya is absolutely in point with regards to this, uh, the, the markets that are now seemingly opening up quite a bit uh, seem to be, uh, and I'm pretty sure it will be saturated soon, is uh, India, and then African languages are, are very much on the rise, uh, it seems. Uh, but generally, I think, and it was also pointed out by some of the interviewees, that it's not necessary to speak the, the actual language as long as you have an idea of how to analyze it and come up with generalizations and find out patterns about the language as well. Um, uh, but yes, absolutely, uh, the underrepresented languages and minority languages as well are also targeted on, especially at the EU level. I mean, which I can say from experience, because Maltese is, is a, you know, a one such language. language. There's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of work on it now. Yeah, there's an interesting point also in the chat about organizational skills and how we can teach them, which is a, it's a big concern of, of mine, for sure, of ours. Uh, and because it, it somehow is at odds with the tradition of linguistics teaching, which sees it as, as a very... So it's a scientific topic for sure, but where you need very profound disciplinary knowledge, but the organizational skills cannot really be taught in a sort of frontal lecture style of, of teaching. So I don't know if, if anyone has yeah, any I'd, thoughts about that. I'd maybe yeah. like to say a few things, Sylvia, thanks. Uh, and I also like to, to comment on another question from the chat, which is related to project management skills. So in terms of the organizational skills, I think this is where our project really came up with an innovative way, which is doing it through games. Uh, and that's one way, of course, we will shape all the more traditional learning materials as well to in the format itself, in the way that the learners engage with the materials, they will uh, learn their organization 
organizational skills in that sense through doing. So they will learn by doing, but then also the games will help there a lot and not just games games, but also gamified learning experiences. And uh, just a brief comment in terms of the uh, project management skills, as someone pointed out very accurately, indeed, doing a research thesis is a project that one needs to manage, but it is a project that you are solely responsible for. And uh, usually you are your only employee, so to speak. So one of the, the very, um, one of the very things uh, that we identified are needed in the market is the ability to manage teams or to work within teams, also to manage the interests of different kinds of stakeholders. Um, in terms of science, it's pretty clear where you need to start from and where you need to end. But then in the business, there are often competing interests and managing all of these things is something that graduates don't seem to be equipped for. If I may add to this, I think it also came out both from the literary re literature review and also from the surveys that uh, in many cases, and also from the curricula, in fact, analysis, that in many cases, the, these, these skills that have to do with the organization and research, et cetera, are more difficult also to voice, to describe by us academics. So if we, uh, for instance, organize certain or teamwork uh, for our students, or we set them tasks and then we have them work on them. Of course, that will help them with collaboration skills and, and time management and, and so on, but then we don't make that explicit. So there's, there's also a problem of with awareness within academia, academia of what needs to be pointed out so that the learners themselves are aware that they have those skills. It's just that that nobody has ever told them, you see. So I, I think that's also you know, something for which our project and also the general interest that we see in this audience could help. Um, I guess we have we may have time for a, for a last question. By the way, the questions that have not been answered now will not be lost, right? Because we are going to keep, there are two people who are going through the chat and they're trying to, uh, to make, or to make a list for this afternoon, for the general discussion this afternoon. Okay, so uh, if there's just one quick question uh, that we may uh, take now, uh, otherwise, I, I think I can. Yeah. I can say on, uh, uh, that there was a, an issue like what what are our thoughts about asking researchers to to do research in a language that uh, that they don't speak? I think that this is where the disciplinary sort of field uh, comes into play. Like the whole point of studying linguistics and studying languages is not that you're learning the language, but also you're learning how to talk about language and how to engage in, in analysis of language. And this is something that was actually. Uh, underlined, and I think this needs to be stressed out by several of our interviewees, that precisely um, uh, what they're looking for is not someone who's a good speaker of English or a good speaker of French or a good speaker of Dutch or whatnot, but someone who can actually talk about English and French and German and whatnot. Uh, from that perspective, if you're a linguist with a general background or if you're studying a language and have some more theoretical background as well, at least, you know, a conceptual basis to talk about this stuff, I think that uh, this actually gives you an edge uh, in the market. Um, and, and obviously, you know, what they're looking for is versatility in most industries, I would imagine. Uh, so I think that, you know, we, 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 if we feel something, if I feel something personally, I can speak on behalf of everyone, is that um, uh, we should make it clear to the students as well that uh, what we're after is not for them to learn perfect uh, German, Spanish, or whatnot, but effectively to talk about language and identify um, you know, particular patterns in language. Uh, so if, if that's not clear to the students, then we are failing sort of the, the lecture side. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you, Stavros. And there's another point that I definitely want to take up this afternoon, which has to do with the connection with the, between the passion for languages, the language I really want to study and learn and, and maybe live in and what is needed by the market and how we can combine these two perspectives because we, we can't really you know just say well i'm going to do this because i'm going to find a job but on, on the other hand we do we do need jobs so uh i this is this is a point uh raised by frida stirs that we definitely want to uh get back to this afternoon but i think now we're perfectly on time and i see that our next distinguished speaker is here so i hand over to the next chair and the next speaker for this morning thank you thank you very much <laughs>